Hi everyone and welcome to my shoe review of the Clifton 3 from Hoka 11. The shoe has a 29 stack height in the heel, a 24 stack height in the forefoot giving you a 5mm from heel to toe. It has an early stage metal rocket to help with heel to toe transition as well as a full piece EVA, uh, full ground contact EVA outsole with strategically placed rubber in the forefoot as well as the heel. It has a no sew construction in the upper with welded overlays. Gives you nice flat laces compared to the noodle laces that came in the first one. A nice padded tongue, a good padded heel, as well as a two millimeter ortholite insert. Uh, it has antimicrobial, and anti which helps with antifungal and also smelly feet syndrome. The shoe is actually quite flexy. It has got a lot of twists and turns. And the cushioning lasts for miles and miles and miles, which is one of the best aspects of the shoe. If you love the version one, you're gonna love the version three, right? Because they're identical. They both have an early stage metal rocker, I tend to get about 300 to 350 kilometers out of a pair of shoes. And like identically in the first one, about 100 to 150 Ks, the forefoot loses a bit of that cushion and goes a little bit more responsive, but you don't lose the cushion in the heel, which is fantastic, especially on a 20 Ks or 30 K long run, when your legs get tired and you start using your heel, especially on the down heels as well, that cushion comes in immensely. There's only one little, little difference I found in version three was the difference in colors. With the difference in colours, for some unknown reason, the green when I first ran it felt a little bit more firmer than the first version. Don't know if it has anything to do with the colours that I actually put into the foam, but after about 30 kilometres to 50 kilometres, the shoe went to its nice plushness that we all come to know and love. So when comparing the version 1 to version 3, there's a couple of little differences you'll notice. First off is the shoelaces are no longer noodle, uh, they're actually flat which actually helps with the spreading of the pressure and you don't get that cheese cutter type style, especially when you're comparing it with a very thin tongue in the first version to a nice padded tongue in the third version. The inner sole on the first version I had issues with because on longer runs I actually did notice it actually started creeping in and at a couple of times I had to take it out, especially on wet runs. Uh, also notice in wet runs the color out of these leach into your socks, whereas this version hasn't had any of those problems as yet. The forefoot in version 3 is a little bit more wider than version 1. Well, it does seem to feel that way. I don't know whether it's a little bit wider or just a different shape. When comparing the outsole, they've actually put a little bit more rubber up here where these two are missing. But that's about it. That's all you get in extra rubber. The durability between version 1 and version 3 are identical. I tend to get about 300 kilometers out of each pair before I have to replace them. The cushioning doesn't go in them. The upper doesn't go in them. None of the good stuff actually goes in them. The only thing that does go in them is the contact rubber here on the bottom. And what tends to happen is because I strike in the midfoot here and the e and the basically the rubber and the EVA do not come right to the edge, the EVA wears away first because the rubber is more abrasive. And what happens is, is that this bit here peels and then that bit pops out. To show you a little shoe, here's another version that I've got where it's actually done that. And the other issue is once that does that, I've then got to cut that off or it falls off. And I come into this mode and the shoe looks like this. And what happens is the EVA starts wearing down really quick. The EVA starts wearing down really quick. And basically the shoe goes on a funny angle then it actually becomes an issue and the shoe is no good no more. The cushioning's still there. The forefoot rubber is all there. Everything is still great about the shoe and doesn't lose anything about it. That's the only downside to the shoe. Give you a backstory between myself and Hoka. I didn't actually like the shoes when I first seen them. Um, and I first seen them on YouTube from the Ginger Runner. Now, it's kind of funny because there's so much cushioning and I thought, why would you need so much cushioning? I was a bit of a minimalist fan. I love the Kambaras. I ran in the three, I ran in the four, I ran in the, the six and also the seven. I also ran in two pairs of the Puma Fast 500s. I actually love them shoes. Now, they are a very underrated shoe. As well as the uh, New Balance uh, Fresh Frame Zante version two. Love them. Peter out of most of those shoes, but they were great, except for the Kavara 7s, which there will be a review out for those later. But when Ginger Runner put these up, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. But it wasn't until I ran my first marathon when I seen a lot of people in Hokers, and I had the New Balance 980s on, that I realised there's something about these shoes. Finished the marathon, my shoes are worn out anyway, and I thought to myself, my legs are really beaten up. And that was the major problem, the long runs and the legs being beat up. Not the short 10K or the short 5K, but 20Ks plus, the legs were really feeling it. At the Cabbie Marathon, came, went to the runner's edge there in Hobart and seen a pair of uh, Bondi's. Put them on, didn't like them, too narrow, they actually hurt my feet. Probably not a good time to be trying on shoes after a marathon, by the way. 
But I did go to the running company in Launceston here in Tasmania, and Mike had the Clifton ones, which I did try on, put them on, and it was like a godsend. They were the best shoe ever had. Went home, rented them, but here's the bonus. I was able to do 20K and back it up with another 20K the next day, and then another 20K if I wanted to, or go 15, 15, and 15, and not feel like the legs were always beaten up. That's where these shoes come in. Now, you may only get 300 kilometers out of the shoe, but value for money-wise, I think they're a better value only because you can't put a price on damaged ligaments, uh, shin splints, things like that. They actually take you out of the game. Whereas the Clifton 3, they're nice and soft. They're fantastic for the longer runs. For shorter runs, go to me with the shoe. I'm also at the money, I'm also at the moment running in the Hoka Tracer, which is okay for speed work, tempo work, I'd say even up to 10K. But that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the Hoka Clifton 3 review and my little rant there at the end. Uh, if you like, give us a thumbs up.